Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. So Jamel Charlo is now the undisputed super welterweight uh, champion. Uh, the WBA, WBC and IBF champ took on Brian Castano, who was a WBO champ. The final piece of the jigsaw that was missing and terrific fight. Very, very entertaining. And um, yeah, it was sort of more of the same from the first fight. I mean, I won't dwell on the first fight because I know you guys, uh, guys and girls probably saw it. And it was that, you know, it's been said before, like the first round of the second fight was the 13th round of the first fight. <clears throat> um, but both these guys put on a hell of a performance, very, very entertaining, very impressive um, from both guys, actually. Uh, Jamel Charlo came in at uh, 34 wins, one defeat, one draw. He'd avenged the defeat against uh, Tony Harrison. Castano was undefeated, had a couple of draws on the record, obviously the one against uh, Charlo. Um and if you hadn't seen the first fight, the thing that would have struck you was the size difference because uh, Charlo looks you know, huge for a super welterweight. I mean, he looks at, he looked at least one weight division bigger than Castano. Castano, uh, Argentinian fighter. Um, it's weird because he's a pressure fighter and you would think if he was up against someone... Uh, it just looks so so much much more physically imposing that he'd have to alter his style. But on the contrary, no, 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 he didn't. And to be honest with you, he didn't have to because although he's a pressure fighter, he's not in any just any way a slugger. He doesn't do it crudely. He doesn't put the pressure on crudely. He puts it on in a very refined, accurate, um, crafty way. And he is the type of fighter who will. He's got a high guard, very good chin. He'll be stepping towards you constantly, making you work constantly. Al Bernstein, who was one of the, the PBC commentators, said, if you fight Brian Costano, you've got to fight for three minutes. And that's, a, that's an excellent way of putting it. Um, Costano will find those gaps. He punches to the body, to the head. He's, he punches hard and accurate with both hands. So even though he looks like a guy who who is... I wouldn't say crude, but more of a... It, he's not a brawler. He's not crude. He just looks sometimes like he's he's not doing it a lot. In fact, he is because of the level of his accuracy, because of the mental pressure he's putting on the opponent. Charlo, make no mistake about it, was taking punches to the body and the head. Again, another guy with a great chin, but he had to work for every second. He's Castano's the type of guy who's saying to you, I'm going to be in your face. And if you're not throwing punches, you've got something to worry about because there'll be, there'll be something coming back at you. And so it proved. And for the first six rounds, I mean, they were close rounds. Don't get me wrong. Charlo was doing well. The question was, could Charlo remain calm under extreme pressure, not wilt, um, keep his, his own offence going, because although Charlo was on the back foot, it was kind of strange seeing the bigger guy constantly move back and move around and use the ring and Castano, the smaller man being the hunter. But that's the way it had to be, and Charlo knew that. And he, for the first six rounds, he was landing his own punches, um, you know, doing very well. Again, the accuracy was good. This is high-level boxing. The accuracy was very good. There were a lot of punches thrown, and I haven't seen the punch stats, but I imagine the the punches landed was, you know, percentage wise was quite high. Um, but could Charlo maintain that concentration, soak up that mental pressure and then come on down the stretch stronger? Or would Castano, Castano wear down Charlo, maintain his own engine and take over in the second round with, you know, an increased amount of this very sort of well-schooled, refined pressure. Well, as it happens, the former was the case because Charlo, from about round seven, I think round seven was the first time where you felt absolutely certain that a round had been won by a particular fighter. The rest of the rounds were, you know, were quite close or very close or quite close. In the seventh, Charlo, I thought, clearly won that round. And you're thinking, is this a turning point? And as it happens, yes, it was. Because I also gave him, I think, the, the eighth and the ninth. And it wasn't that Castaño has was doing anything particularly wrong. He he was just being outfought, if you like, by a Charlo 
who did not wilt under the, the early or under the, the pressure of the first half of the fight. He actually maintained his concentration, kept doing what he was doing, and actually did come on stronger in the second half of the fight. Uh, he was catching Castagna with uh, accurate punches, both hands, body and head. Both these fighters worked the body pretty well throughout the whole fight. Um, and But Charlo was taken over, and it was noticeable that over the, particularly the seventh round, the eighth and the ninth, that Castagna wasn't throwing as many punches, wasn't being as effective. He was... It was more a case of him following Charlo around now and kind of, you know, waiting and looking for little gaps rather than creating them for himself. Or you know, he was less cavalier as well in his attitude. And it sort of indicated that Castaño's um, energy was getting a little bit lower. Again, he wasn't doing anything wrong, but Charlo himself was now putting the pressure on. He was putting the mental pressure on Castaño, whereas the first six rounds had been Castaño putting the mental pressure on him. Well, in the 10th round, my, my prediction, by the way, I think it was an 11th round stoppage for Charlo. And I was one round out because in the 10th round, Charlo closed the show. And even though he, he was definitely in the ascendancy throughout the second half of the fight, the ending was quite uh, abrupt. It was quite out of the blue. It was a right hand to the body from Charlo and followed by a very tight, compact left hook that caught Castaño more or less on the temple. It was either on the eye socket or the temple. Um, and there was a delayed reaction. Castagna went down, um, got up, did not look well. Did not look. He looked shaky. He did not look steady at all. The referee allowed it to carry on. And then Charlo, understandably, went forward and finished it with a left hook to the body against a much weakened Castagna. Castagna has got absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. He gave everything, left it all in the ring. Uh, but Charlo, this was a very, very good performance by Charlo, who is clearly the best Super Bowl to in the world. He's earned the right to call himself that. Very, very good fighter. Um, and I like the way he's come back from that defeat against Harrison and the draw against Castagno. Castagno, again, he can hold belts in the future. When Charlo moves up, Castagno, I can't think how old he is. What is he, 31 or something? I might be wrong about that. Anyway, uh, he can win belts again. He's a good fighter. But at the moment, Jamel Charlo, again, so big for the weight, so tall, you know, and, and big with it. And I'm thinking, how the hell does he make? He came in at, I think he came in at 152. <laughs> you wouldn't know it. Castagno looked like a welterweight in there. Um, but credit to both guys. It was a good fight. Very, very good fight. And we now have another undisputed champ, which is good. I like these undisputed champs. It's good for boxing when there's one man standing. This is the way it should be. Are you listening? Errol Spence, Terence Crawford. Spencer, of course, is another PBC fighter. He was there in the crowd with uh, you know, supporting his mate. But yeah, what did you think of it? Did you see it? Leave your comments below. What's next for Charlo? His brother's up at 160, so I don't think he'll be going anywhere near him. I can't see the brothers fighting each other. Um, Castagna can regroup. This was only his 20th fight, I think, Castagna. You wouldn't believe it. You'd think he'd had about 30 or 40 fights, the way he fights. He's very, very good. Uh, but what did you think? Leave your comments below. And uh, yeah, good little fight that. Thanks for your time. As always, subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you could just hit that subscribe button, I always appreciate it. It helps the channel out. Hit the like button and uh, I'll catch you again later. Thanks. Enjoy your Sunday. Bye for now.